गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन आई वेलकम यू बैक ऑन दिस क्लास ऑफ वीडियो लेक्चर एंड दिस इज बी ए पास सेकेंड इंग्लिश लिटरेचर पेपर वन पोइट्री एंड ड्रामा एंड फ्रेंड्स एज यू ऑल आर अवेयर दैट फॉर लास्ट कपल ऑफ वीक्स वी हैव बिन डूइंग एल ई जी रिटर्न इन अ कंट्री चर्च यार्ड रिटर्न बाई थॉमस ग्रे सो यस्टरडे वी डिड स्टेंज अ नंबर सिक्सटीन एंड टूडे वी कम टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेंजा राइट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई रीड दैट स्टेंजा देयर लॉट फॉर बैड नॉर सर कमस्क्राइब्ड अलोन देयर ग्रोइंग वर्च्यूज बट देयर क्राइम्स कन्फाइंड फॉर बैड टू वेड थ्रू स्लॉटर टू ए थ्रॉन and shut the gates of mercy on mankind so friends here in this stanza the poet again speaks on about these villagers about all these masses which are obscured unidentified and their lives are uneventful so the poet says their humble lot though it allowed no opportunity for the development of their noble qualities did nevertheless save them from many a wicked deed of which they would otherwise have been guilty it likewise saved them from committing bloodshed such as it sometimes resorted to by an ambitious man to use up a kingdom it saved them also from becoming merciless tyrants so in this stanza the poet chiefly talks of the noble virtues of these villagers their lot forbade nor circumscribed alone their growing virtues he talks of their nobility their generosity their magnificent nature but their crimes confined forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne the poet says that these villagers these classes of society never went to the extent of power thrust power hunger which requires merciless steps on the part of man and woman to become powerful and one goes to the extent of blood sedge one goes to the extent of conspiracy treasury for what just to use up thrones powers right so i move on to next stanza that is stanza number 18 the struggling pangs of conscious truth to hide to quench the blushes of ingenious shame or heap the shrine of luxury and pride with incense kindled at the muses flame so friends in this stanza what does the poet say the poet says their lot forbade them to hide the struggling pangs of conscious truth or honesty as also from becoming courtly and venal poets they never tried willfully to misrepresent truth by stifling free inquiry inquiry and the evidence of truth they never attempted to suppress the blush that is caused by natural feeling of shame they had a very normal and natural life whatever they felt it came on their face in the form of expression they never knew about any snobbery they never knew about any pretension they never tried willfully to misrepresent truth by stifling free inquiry and the evidence of truth they never attempted to suppress the blush that is caused by natural feeling of shame they never addressed flattering poems to the rich 
and great in the hope of being rewarded by them such was the simple life of these poor people so i again repeat this stanza this is very important friends the struggling pangs of conscious truth to hide to quench the blushes of ingenious shame or heap the shrine of luxury and pride with intense incense kindled at the muse's flame so i move on to stanza number 19 far from the madding crowds this is very important stanza friends and thomas hardy has picked up uh, a title of one of his novels far from the madding crowd far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife their sober wishes never learn to stray along the cool sequestered well of life they kept the noiseless tenor of their way so here what does poet want to say the poet wants to say living as they did aloof from the mean competition and jealousies of people who devote themselves frantically to worldly pursuits yes in fact we all human beings the ordinary human beings are solely completely dedicated to worldly pursuits and worldly pursuits include all competition all jealousy all envy all anger whatever it is which is a part of human nature right so living as they did aloof from the they they remained themselves away from pure worldly pursuits such was their pure life such was their rustic life they were able to refrain themselves from these virtues living as they did aloof from the mean competition and jealousies of people who devote themselves frantically to worldly pursuits their desires were always moderate and set within proper limits they led a quiet retired humble life to the end of their allotted span of life yes they never devoted their entire life to worldly pursuits this is very important in fact the whole life revolves around this worldly pursuits and worldly pursuits include competition the characteristic approach a sort of speed a sort of race we all get engaged in a race to surpass others we want to attain name fame and opinion we want to have everything in our life so naturally we get engaged in a race but the moment we get engaged in a race what happens that something is left behind and what is left behind first of all nature is left behind health is left behind our relations are left behind mercy is left behind compassion is left behind sympathy is left behind sensitivity is left behind and what happens we become cold hearted we become ignorant we become in a way tyrant we become selfish we become merciless we crush human values and the moment we crush human values we become devils and demons and we do it for all for what just to obtain all these worldly ambitions fulfill these worldly ambitions so the poet says living as they did aloof from the mean competition is always mean because it requires 
a sort of merciless approach so from the mean competition and jealousies of people who devote themselves frantically to worldly pursuits their desires were always moderate their desires were always moderate and set within proper limits they led a quiet retired humble life to the end of their allotted span so friends today we did almost two three stanzas so the space doesn't permit us thank you very much